At 12.10 hours Central Standard Time, on March 10, 1989, an Air Ontario Fokker F-28, Flight 363, prepared to take off at Dryden Airport, Ontario, Canada. It was a scheduled passenger service to Winnipeg, Manitoba. At the controls was Captain George Morwood, a safety-minded pilot with more than 30 years flying experience. His co-pilot was First Officer Keith Mills, a younger man with 10 years flying experience. The cabin crew on board Flight 363 were Catherine Say and Sonia Hartwick. Say was a flight attendant with 10 years flying experience who had earned commendations from passengers and airline management alike. Hartwick, with two and a half years flying experience, was considered a valuable employee and was well liked by her colleagues. Canara Radio, uh, Ontario 363. We're ready for takeoff. Following a short engine run up, Flight 363 commenced takeoff. The aircraft rotated, but Rotate. tragically failed to fly. After a second rotation on the takeoff roll, the aircraft battled to become airborne. It clipped trees and ploughed through a heavily treed ridgeline, eventually coming to rest in deep snow less than a kilometre from the end of the runway. Come on! Twenty-four people died. Tonight, on the National, Ontario crash. Some survivors, some fatalities, as a jet goes down. The plane took off in heavy snow and crashed seconds later, about two kilometers past the end of the runway. The aircraft apparently dipped one wing shortly after takeoff, then stabilized for a moment before plowing into the forest. A passerby who arrived at the site shortly after the crash told me he saw burnt and bleeding passengers staggering away from the plane through waist-deep snow. Investigators say it will take days, perhaps weeks, to establish the cause of today's disaster. There was wet snow falling at the time the plane took off, and the temperature was hovering around zero. Safety officials say weather conditions like that can create an icing problem for aircraft. Fire engulfed the aircraft after impact. That damaged the flight recorders in the tail of the plane and destroyed the tapes inside containing flight information. Paul Adams, CBC News, Dryden. The Air Ontario crash prompted an immediate investigation by the then Canadian Aviation Safety Board. This was taken over by an exhaustive commission of inquiry into circumstances surrounding the accident. At the time, David Adams of the Australian Bureau of Air Safety Investigation was on exchange with the Canadian Aviation Safety Board. Adams led the Human and Survival Factors Group of the investigation team and was subsequently appointed as a specialist investigator to the Commission. The Commission's findings reveal much about inadequate procedures poor communications and corporate pressures which combined to seal the fate of Flight 363. There were several important factors which contributed to the crash of Flight 363. Things had begun to go wrong early that morning when the aircraft was dispatched from Winnipeg with an unserviceable auxiliary power unit. While this is a routine situation for flight crews, Lack of ground start facilities at Dryden meant that it featured prominently in this particular accident sequence. In addition to this, Captain Morwood was under considerable pressure since the flight was way behind schedule by the time it came to take off at Dryden. It was the Friday of a long weekend and passengers were anxious to make connecting flights. Ontario 363 had become more and more delayed throughout the day. This was mainly the result of poor weather, time taken to offload fuel so that extra passengers from another cancelled flight could be taken on board, plus being forced to delay takeoff in Dryden while a light aircraft attempted to land in heavy snow. However, these situations are neither unusual nor insurmountable for an experienced crew such as that on board Flight 363. 
these factors in isolation did not cause the aircraft to crash. To understand what led to the Dryden tragedy, we have to look more closely at the people involved and the circumstances leading up to the accident on March the 10th, 1989. We see that it was a combination of events and circumstances. Poor communication between members of the crew, possible fatigue, stress and corporate pressures, which all played an important part. Flight 363 began its journey at Thunder Bay, where according to the flight release, it should have had 55 passengers on board. But after everyone had boarded, it was discovered that there were in fact an additional 10 passengers. They had joined the aircraft after their Canadian partner flight was cancelled. As First Officer Mills calculated, the additional load meant that the aircraft would be overweight for a landing in Dryden. Captain Morwood's initial response was to avoid further delays by offloading the additional passengers. However, he was overruled by Air Ontario and so decided to act according to whoever got to the aircraft first, the fuel company or the airline ticket staff. Dispatch. The fuel company was the first to arrive, so Captain Morwood asked for 3,000 pounds of fuel to be unloaded with the inevitable consequence of a long delay and mounting frustration among the crew and passengers. If only I knew. If it's not one thing holding us up, it's another. Lord, don't worry, everything will be fine. Don't those guys know what they're doing? We should have been told about those extra passengers a lot sooner. Now we're way behind schedule. And if you ask me, the ground crew is not doing enough to help us. Yeah, I agree. Don't let this get to us. We'll pull through. Delays or no delay. Just think of the long weekend ahead. Yes, yes, I guess you're right. Thank you, Sonia. You're welcome. Dispatch. Flight 363 eventually departed Thunder Bay at 11.04 hours, one hour, nine minutes late. The flight to Dryden was uneventful, and the aircraft landed at 11.30. By this stage of the flight, the crew were feeling frustrated about being behind schedule. They'd been away for six days and were keen to get home. A normal reaction in this sort of situation. Captain Morwood would probably have felt more keenly than any of the others the corporate pressures of being late. He was known as a stickler for punctuality and felt a strong obligation to his passengers. However, it appears that at this point he was still in control of the situation. When the aircraft reached Dryden, Captain Morwood went into the terminal to call the company dispatcher at Air Ontario to inform him of the delays and the fact that there would be a further delay due to an uplift of fuel at Dryden. According to the dispatcher, Captain Morwood sounded his normal, professional self. After Captain Morwood returned to the aircraft, he spoke to the general manager of Dryden Flight Centre. Morwood wanted the fuel load increased to 13,000 pounds, so the aircraft was hot refueled. At this point, Morwood noticed that fairly heavy, wet snow had started to fall. He remarked on this to the general manager and asked him if de-icing was available. He was told that it was, but that it didn't appear to be necessary. Everything seemed quite normal for pre-takeoff. However, at that point, a squall came over the aircraft and dumped a lot of wet snow. Some passengers were starting to ask questions about snow that was accumulating on the wings. At 12.02, Kenora Radio cleared Flight 363 for taxi to runway 29. Captain Morwood might have thought that at last he was getting his passengers underway. Okay. However, Kenora was also in contact with a light aircraft, a Cessna 150, yeah. which was in some difficulty attempting to land at Dryden in heavy snow. Even though his aircraft was fired up and taxiing, Morwood was asked to hold while the Cessna came in. Well, folks, it uh, seems as though a little plane has gotten into trouble out there right now. 